Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us tonight for our football forum. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time, as Glenn said, uh, talking to you about the review that I conducted at the end of the season. Um, I think uh, we've already talked to members about some of the outcomes and some of the improvements that we, uh, the changes we made as a result of that review. But I just want to spend a little bit of time tonight talking about how that's being implemented, um, how it will affect our pre-season and how it will roll out into next year. So again, the review you may remember was conducted for two reasons. The first, we've got to make sure that we get right in behind our performance for this year to establish, to make sure that we've got the right people, the right programs and resources to make sure that we bounce back next year and back into the finals where we think we belong and uh, that we've really got behind every aspect of our performance this year. And the second part of the review was a result of the fact that the AFL manda uh, mandated a $3 million cut to every club's soft cap. So that's a cut out of the football program. So part of the review was to make sure that that $3 million in cuts was going to be done in a way that it didn't impact the strategic priorities of our program moving into not only next year, but years to come. And I think as part of the review that we'll talk about now, we've been able to um, find efficiencies, make sure that we're really focused on what are the core elements and the priorities of our strategy moving forward. And really importantly, making sure that we've got the best people in the positions and they're all working to their optimum. Um, and I'm pretty comfortable that we've got to that point. Um, the focus of tonight, the themes that I want to talk about very quickly, I'm going to talk about leadership, on-field um, consistency and performance. We'll be talking about skill execution and our commitment to excellence, game style and list management, how they're um, connected and so critically important to what we produce each year, and uh, talking about our elite training facilities and the impact that that has on our program. So if I start with leadership, and a key finding of the review is the fact that the, the head of our football program now, the program has be just become so broad. And over the years, it's just got bigger and bigger as we've introduced AFLW and VFLW. Um, we've now got facilities that have been a focus for our football program and soft caps and salary caps, our obligations back to the AFL from a governance point of view. And, and that role got to a point um, that we could start to see the, uh, the impact of that. And it was important to put in place a leader of our AFL only football performance. And, and that was a role that uh, Alan Richardson took up pretty well straight away. Um, he hit the ground running uh, pretty well the day after. And um, I've, I've instantly seen the results of that. He's now been able to pull together a really great team of assistant coaches and staff who've made changes right across um, the footy program. And like I said, $3 million worth of cuts will affect every club. Um, unfortunately, we lost probably about 30% of our um, staff and, and coaches. So uh, Alan's been able to make sure that he's got the time and focus to put into pulling that program together. And I, like I said, um, I've seen the uh, positive impact of that, having someone being dedicated to that role every day. One of the other areas that we identified that while um, Simon's been coaching, he's had some great support from people around him, but it really was time to get some new energy, some new ideas, some new leadership, some new people into the assistant uh, uh, coaching area around Goody. Um, we've made some changes since then, which we've uh, made uh, our members aware of. Adam Uze was one of the first changes we made was very popular. I think members always loved seeing our past champions come back to the club. But um, to us, that was just a bit of icing on the cake, really. The reason why we targeted Adam and we went and got him, brought him into the club, because he's acknowledged as one of the uh, the best assistant coaches in the AFL. Um, he's, he's worked in a very successful, strong football program at Hawthorne for a long period of time. And he's been great from day one that he arrived at the club, working with the other assistant coaches. His ideas, his energy, the IP that he brings to the club um, has been critically important. And Greg Stafford, 
Um, some of you might know that Greg's been working with the club for um, quite a few years, but more just focused on helping Maxi Gorn become the, uh, the, the number one uh, ruckman in the competition, our captain now, one of the great ambassadors of the club, and Greg Stafford has been doing that work with him. I think he's one of the great teachers, one of the great leaders that we've had around the place. Um, and we were lucky enough when we asked Greg that uh, he agreed to step up into a more broader role as one of the assistant coaches. And again, um, has made an instant change to the dynamic of that group around Goody. And um, he'll continue to have a really positive effect as he, as he works with the forward line, a young group that can really benefit from the, uh, the coaching and guidance from uh, staff. And for Troy Chaplin, who... Um, I think we would say as we had a, an up and down year last year, our, our back line was largely pretty solid and um, Troy led that group. Um, I think we can see that while we've got some really experienced players down there, when you look at it, they actually haven't played a lot of football together. Um, they've come from other clubs, some of them have been out at different times with injuries. And last year was the first time that Troy got to pull that group together and, and, we'll, and he'll spend next year now focused on continuing to develop that group. So really good assistant group surrounding Goody and the program and we're pretty excited about what they'll bring to the program. One of the other key areas of the review that I talked to members about was this areas of, of uh, on-field consistency in our performance. And um, we've focused on three key areas of that. Um, we're talking about the execution of our standards and disciplines, um, about psychological resilience and physical resilience. Um, when I talk about consistency on field, I'm talking about two aspects of that that come through very strongly in the review. There's the consistent performance within a game. Um, I, I don't have to remind members that there was uh, quite a few games where we would win two quarters, maybe even three quarters, maybe even three and a half, but there'd be a 10 minute period, maybe a quarter where if our performance wasn't maintained, teams were able to keep, kick enough goals to actually get over the top of us in the end. And when you have a season where you finish one game out of the finals, we can start to see how that inconsistency within a game can have a very big impact and inconsistency between games too. And again, I don't want to remind you uh, of this, but I'm sure there's plenty of times that you would see us play one of our great games, beat some of the teams that ended up playing in the finals and feel like that we were really getting a, a, um, a program together that was going to take us forward. Um, but just too often, a week or two later, the variation between our best performance and um, what was delivered maybe a couple of weeks later, these are the opportunities for us to get better. And I think I've made it pretty clear um, to the members, we see this as the difference between the top six teams and, and us where we sit. Uh, we see our best football as good as a Geelong or Richmond that uh, play off in a grand final, but our drop-off within a game or a drop-off between weeks is what sets us apart from those teams that have far more consistency. So it's critically important. I mentioned standards and disciplines, and we've obviously been running uh, programs every year in this space. But when we benchmarked ourselves against the best AFL clubs, the best, uh, most successful sporting organisations, um, uh, when we did the review, this aspect come up really strongly. The best teams are the ones that can execute consistently this real commitment to stands, standards and disciplines. And while it's driven through the whole football program, um, there will be a very big focus and it's a priority of our program built into our program and pre-season of the players taking real ownership of this. They've got to own it. They've got to drive it. They've got to hold each other accountable. And, and we believe the consistency from day one of pre-season all the way through and in our training and in our execution on game day, these are the consistent elements um, that can make a difference. Again, uh, we're not looking for a, a 20 or a 15% you know, jump in performance. We're looking at a scenario where um, we miss out the finals um, by uh, one game and we're looking at all these elements being the difference of putting us into the realms of you know, these 
top six or top eight teams and being in the finals and, and being able to win finals. Standards and disciplines are really important. Um, I talked about psychological resilience. The review highlighted the fact that it was a tough year. I think we all understand that. This is one of the toughest years that the football program has ever been through. And we, we might touch on that a little bit later on. And what we found within the review that while we have a um, performance psychology program that um, a lot of time and energy this year was absorbed while we were dealing with the challenges of the year, while we were in the hub, while we were taking our players and coaches away from their families and relocating them, a lot of that psychological support was in the welfare care support area. Um, and we, we really see it as an opportunity for growth. Again, this has been built into our pre-season and in-season programs that that psychological um, performance and resilience part of our program um, and without going into specific names, several of our players that really engaged in that during the year really benefited from it. Um, and what you will see is this will become a much bigger part of our program right across all of the players um, for the entire uh, period of our pre-season and in-season um, program. And the physical resilience is a pretty obvious one. If we're wanting consistent performances within four quarters and from week to week, um, one of the main reasons, and, and I know that you know this, is that of our improvement this year is, you know, Darren Burgess coming on board with his team. Uh, we, we had a fit, um, healthy list for the majority of the year. It made such a difference that so many of the players are saying it's the fittest they've ever been. Uh, we had players that were really struggling to get out on the field consistently that were able to achieve that because of the work that we did in this space. So the physical resilience is really important. And a year like last year where we were playing uh, regularly games with uh, four or five day breaks, we were able to come up and it was a critical component. But that was the first year of the program and the members should remember the second year of that program under Burjo is going to be more intense. It'll be more targeted. It will be a step up. And again, I think in combination, all these elements, physical resilience, psychological resilience, a real commitment to the standards and disciplines across the board, um, we believe will drive a far more consistent performance. Skill execution, um, you know, it, it come through as the review. You could see it throughout the season as well. At critical times, I think you can hold your own against the, uh, the teams in the bottom section of the ladder. But when you're playing against the best teams and in the big games and in tight last quarters, um, if you don't have your skill levels um, at the same level as the opposition, you know, it makes it easy for them to beat you in those uh, pressure moments. So um, that's already been ramped up as uh, within our program. It's a new level of commitment. I think we send a pretty strong message when um, we announced to the members that we went out, we targeted, we got Mark Choco Williams into the program. We just think he's one of the best teachers, the best coaches. So many players would look back on their career and see him as a major influence in, in their improvement. And we believe bringing him into the program, he'll have a substantial effect in that space. I'm not going to go into the, what the program looks like. Um, really, I, I would rather you see that next year and you come back to us and go, I can see the the improvement in this skill execution, including goal kicking right across the board. But again, these are all components built into our pre-season campaign. And the elite training facilities, um, you know, we've talked about it quite a bit with the members. Uh, you know, we've we've had our challenges and limitations with the uh, with the setup at, at Amy, and it's been difficult. But been very clear that this pre-season and all next. Um, the 2021 season will be out at Casey Fields. We'll be doing pre-season and training out there. Um, what that does allow us to do is deal with one of our biggest issues, which is an undersized ground as, as part of our training. Um, if ever you get a chance to go out to Casey Field, it's an MCG size ground. It's the best conditioned surface I think I've ever seen. It looks magnificent. Um, and so for the players with their training and their, their game simulation and their practice games, they'll, they'll be doing that on an MCG size ground and that'll make a big difference. And again, this was another element in the review that created challenges. And, and also out there with 
just completed a redevelopment where we've built an indoor kicking facility. Um, mightn't sound like much, but I can tell you now there's a reason why every other AFL club um, has an indoor kicking facility, again, where you can do the skill development work throughout the whole season, regardless of the weather, um, and, and practice your game strategy, walking through those things in an appropriate environment. So these are aspects of our program that will be in place as a direct response to the, the review of what we need to do to put in place the most professional program. And, and I did want to update, Glenn talked about that um, our number one off-field priority, which is to create this home base for the club. And, um, you know, this is something that I literally work on every single day. It's, it's so important to this club. And if I focus more, while we're looking at it from a football admin social club perspective, for the purpose of tonight, if I look at it from a training point of view, the work we're doing with the state government and the AFL, um, ultimately the end goal is to be creating a AFL standard, AFL size um, ground, um, all the facilities, including indoor kicking. That means there's no part of our program. We can go to Goody and the coaches and say, there's no compromise in the programs that we run and you've got everything that you need to prepare this team. Um, so again, uh, a really important process. And I just want to touch on this because it was another part of the review um, that there was a lot of uh, focus and feedback on. I get a lot of feedback from supporters on this as well, which is the whole area of game style and, and list management. And uh, while it doesn't suit you know, any of our purposes, if I was to get into talking about specific elements of our game style, suffice to say, the players and coaches have a real confidence in the game style. And I know what we've received feedback about it, but when you're inconsistently executing that um, over four quarters, sometimes it can look like um, the game style's not uh, fantastic or it doesn't deliver the results. Um, there's no doubt to the player group, to the coaches, to myself, um, that when we consistently deliver that, um, we'll, we'll achieve the outcomes that we want. And um, one of the things I'm about to uh, roll into the next uh, speaker, this area about how our decisions that you've seen in our period of trading and last night in our um, decisions we've made in recruiting these young players to our group, that is in direct connection with the work we do from a um, game style Point of view. So we look at that. Yes, there's been some review and tweaks of what, uh, as the new assistant coaches have come in as well, about what's going to take us forward. But all these decisions around these players are all directly um, linked into that as well. And 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 parts of the review feedback has uh, been taken into consideration. 